This is Gareth Southgate, and this is the Three Lions Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Three Lions Podcast. My name is Russell Osborne and this is an independent England football supporters podcast. I hope you're well. Fairly short one this, uh, as I just wanted to touch on a competition that is taking place at the moment that may have just passed you by. I meant to do a piece about it a week or so back, but (laughs) general life just got in the way and preparing for the uh, Malta and Macedonia preview episode. But this one is about the Under-17 World Cup. It's currently taking place in Indonesia. Now, it began on the 10th of November and it runs until the 2nd of December. It is the 19th edition of this tournament and it comes around every two years pandemics permitting. Now I wanted to mention this competition as you may remember back in 2017 it took place in India and England won it. We beat Spain 5-2 in the final. 2019 though didn't go so well we didn't qualify for the tournament and then as I mentioned the dreaded pandemic in 2021 where Peru were supposed to be the hosts. But it was pulled, much like many events of the time. That 2017 victory was the best by a long shot that England have ever achieved. Prior to that, the first time we actually qualified was in 2007, which was the 12th edition. We made it to the quarterfinals before losing to Germany (laughs) 4-1. That has a, a certain ring of familiarity about it, doesn't it? Danny Rose and Danny Welbeck were in that team. 2011 was the next time. Again, the quarterfinals. Again, Germany. Again, we lost. Um, But Jordan Pickford and Raheem Sterling were in that squad. And then 2015 saw us eliminated at the group stage. Now, to the untrained eye, and I class myself very much in this category... The names within the squad in this current competition, they're not ones I am really familiar with. But looking back on 2017 now, it's interesting to see who have made their way in the game, especially those still within the England setup. Well, the immediate standout names from 2017 are Mark Gay, Phil Foden, Jaden Sancho, Callum hudson Adoy, Emil Smith-Rowe and Conor Gallagher. And you'll notice that all of those have gone on to win senior caps. Many of the others within the squad play currently for championship sides or League One. Although Rian Brewster, remember that name? Uh, currently plays for Liverpool. He actually scored in that final. In time, maybe, will be considered for the senior squad. And I've said in the past about youth tournament winning sides, maybe not to get too excited about the players who are part of the team, because you never know how life will take them. Perhaps, looking back, I've been proved wrong here. Six out of 21, that's a fairly good return, isn't it? So, how did England get to this tournament, I hear you ask? Well, Initially, we topped a group containing Switzerland, Croatia and the Netherlands when they all played their games in Hungary in May of this year. We then went forward to the quarterfinals where we lost to France, but ended up playing Switzerland again in the World Cup playoff. So here we are. As I say, the World Cup, it is being held in Indonesia. It's across four stadiums, 24 teams, six groups of four. Top two qualify, along with the four best third-place teams. Now, England are in Group C, 
and have already faced New Caledonia and Iran and faced Brazil on the 17th in Jakarta. Brazil, as it happens, are the current holders, having won it back in 2019. Across the tournament, there are a lot of the usual faces you'd expect to see. Argentina, Spain, Japan, Poland, the States, Mexico and Germany. But there's also a few where you think, ah, that's interesting. Uzbekistan, New Caledonia and Burkina Faso, for example. Again, to the untrained eye, perhaps naive of me to quickly write off some of these nations that we may think don't have a football heritage. So beware. Now, I've got to be honest, though, my under-17 game, it isn't strong. (laughs) It's a squad managed by Ryan Gary, formerly of Arsenal and Bournemouth, and has come through the England youth managerial ranks, taking charge of previous under-17 and under-18 sides. Now, the squad, I don't recognise any of these players. Obviously, there are a lot of recognisable clubs, players from Chelsea, Arsenal, Manchester City, Manchester United, hashtag United. Yes, hashtag United. Uh, But in fairness to him, he is on loan from Chelsea. But this squad is a snapshot of the times and the country we now live in. One of multiculturalism and diversity. A lot of these players, I'm going to need help in pronouncing their names correctly. There's also a lot of double-barrelled ones in there too. Gone are the days of Smith, Jones, Lampard and Beckham. I truly hope that these are big names to be put on your shirt in five or six years' time. But back to the competition. England got their campaign underway with a 10-0 victory over New Caledonia. Told you not to write off these teams too quickly. Uh, But by doing that, they recorded the age group's largest victory. 10-0 win, eh? Not a bad way to get a tournament started. Putting down a marker there. Nine different names on the score sheet. Uh, Brazil, well, they then went and thumped them (laughs) 9-0. But next up for England were Iran, who took the lead before we ran out 2-1 winners. And it took us a last-minute goal to secure the three points there. Because Iran, well, they'd previously beaten Brazil. So with two games gone, we are top of the group with six points and a goal difference of plus 11. It's a safe bet to say we've won Group C. But going forward, the winner of Group C plays a third-best team from either Group A, B or F. So at the moment, uh, it's a little hard to call. So there we have it. As I say, it's just a short one to take a quick look at the current Under-17 World Cup. It is being streamed on FIFA's website. So if you want to watch any of the games, head over there. But do take into account they are seven hours ahead of us. Uh, And I think you'll also find some of the goals or highlights on England's Twitter account. I'll keep you up to date with how they get on in their next few games and who they meet and play in the quarterfinals as we uh, we go along. But thanks for tuning in. Don't forget, the Malta and North Macedonia preview episode is out ahead of the seniors match in their final European qualifiers. I'll be catching up with how they went very soon. So stay subscribed and you won't miss it. Until then, take care of yourselves. Cheers.